Hi everyone, it's Nat here. Hope you're doing well. This is a tag for Christmas. I'm making tags for a swap. It is hosted by Carol at Oak House Journals. So I'm using some manila folder and some old Christmas music page. So I'm doing a voiceover if you haven't guessed. So I thought I'd show the making of my tags. And I'm still waiting on my second tag because I've got two swap partners. So when I get my second one in the next week, I will show you both the awesome tags I've got. I haven't looked at the first one yet. I thought I'd open up my envelopes on camera with you guys. So I'm just cutting my manila folder down into four pieces because I need four pieces for my two tags. Now I'm just covering two of the pieces with music paper for the fronts of the tags. And then I'll be covering two pieces with tea dyed paper for the backs of the tags. So I just used the roller to spread the glue out underneath. So there you see the tea dyed paper that I'm putting on the back of the tags. And you just don't mind, it's very edited this video. I chopped it up heaps just to make it smaller for you and sped it all up. <laughs> so I didn't have to talk through an hour of it. I thought I'd take pity on you guys. <laughs> so I'm not very good at making tags and that, so I thought I'd just have fun with it and see what I could come up with. So just trimming off the excess paper. I cut the board to at the size to fit through my big shot, basically, because I knew I wanted to die cut the tag shapes. So I'm using the Tim Holtz Distressed Tags, I think they're called. Just the big one there, because it's got the nice distressed edges. Thought that would be a nice touch. And just cutting out the tag shapes. And I, now I've grabbed some gesso, and what I've got there is just some tea dyed paper scrap. And I'm just putting a bit of gesso on it with a dry brush, because I just want some light, sort of whitish, messy white, paint on there and I'll be doing this on both sides of the tea dyed paper and you'll see a bit later why because I've got to let that dry so I'm sort of a bit back and forth with things on this project so back to the tags now now I would have cut two of those front pieces now I have a little square die here because I want to cut a window now I want to cut this window in all four pieces so that's the two fronts and the two backs for my tags now I've got some washi tape that's not very sticky here because I don't want my die to move around at all so I'm going to stick it down and I'm sticking it on the um, die and the inside part. So it, just in case it rips the music paper, I don't want it to rip on the uh, music paper of the actual tag. So it doesn't matter if it rips a bit on the square on the inside because that's the piece that we're not using. I mean, I'll probably use it for a project some other time since it's a nice little square. but it will just help it not move around while I'm putting, setting it up in the um, big shot and everything. So I'm doing this process with the um, two tops, but I figure it's quicker if I just show you me doing one <laughs> and speed it up for you. So it's cut a nice little window there for me. So now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get it so I've got the window in the exact same spot in the back. So I'm putting the tag on top and then putting the little square back in so I get it right where I want it and then putting the die over the top of the square and then tracing around the die and that way I can get it sort of pretty well exactly where it is on that top and get cut it in the exact same sort of position on the bottom. And again, I'm just using the washi tape to hold it in place while I cut it. And again, I do that for both backing pieces. Just got to keep remembering which is the back and which is the inside because we've got the tea dyed paper on the back. 
I'm just making sure that it fits together nicely. Now here's my little gesso tea dye paper and I'm using my punch with a Christmas tree and a punch with some little stars just to cut out some nice little, um, little embellishment pieces. And they're to go in my little window. And I've got this scissor, which I'm trying to show you there, has, is a shaped scissor. And I didn't think of this beforehand or else I would have realised I might have needed a bit more paper. But there was just enough for me to cut a little ridge out of that piece because I thought it'd be nice to have a bit of ground. So I'm just cutting a piece that fits nicely in the bottom of the window there. Okay, so now we're jumping over again and I've got my gesso back. And I've got a gym card, which this is the best use for a gym card. <laughs> and I'm using that just to scrape just a little tiny bit of gesso over the front and the backs of my tags. Just to mellow them out, make them look a bit more vintage and snowy-like. Sort of flying by the seat of my pants with this. Um, it's not my forte and I was just having a bit of fun with it and seeing how they turned out. Now, I had to be careful with this because I'd glued the paper on. Um, of course, the gesso sort of wets the paper a bit. Uh, so you, I do not want to do it too thickly um, because um, I know with some of the tea dyed paper, it started bubbling up after doing this. And especially with the um, next step I did on the front and back of the tags. But it wasn't too bad. Just scraping it all around and getting the excess off of the mat and scraping it back on. So I've got my distress ink there. Just dabbing it on, spraying a bit of water on. And I get some tissue and wipe up the excess water because, like I said, I didn't want it too, too wet. And I'm just dabbing the tags in to get a little bit of colour on top of the gesso here and there. Now, it looks real dark when it goes on, but with the gesso and as it dries, it's really light in the end. It's amazing how light it becomes at the end. But again, just to give it that sort of vintage and sort of dirty <laughs> feel. It's quite fun ink smushing. I'm loving using those plastic cold stickies mats. They're great for gluing on and inking on and everything. So I'm glad I kept them. So then I let that dry and now I'm just inking around the insides of my windows. You want to do that, of course, before you stick your acetate or whatever you're using in. I use transparency film, projector film. It's a bit thinner. You can probably see there where my fingers are that is a little bit bubbly there from my ink smushing and gessoing on the tea dyed paper. Now I put it down there just to try and get the ink into the corners a bit. So I repeat that process with all four pieces. Oh, and now I decide I want to ink like my little stars and Christmas trees. But the star, some of the stars are so tiny. So I thought, how the heck am I going to ink around the edges of them? <laughs> so I'm squishing the tip of a cotton bud <laughs> to try and use that as an ink tool. It sort of worked, but in the end, I think I gave up and just used my blender over the top because I really did just want a bit of ink on the edges. <laughs> so... And I mean, you can't hold those little stars with your fingers either. So it was a tweezer job, that one. <laughs> yeah, it was fiddly. <laughs> so yeah, I just inked all these pieces. They ended up looking really good. It's just like the tea dyed paper scrap. Um, but with that little bit of gesso and the ink, I think that um, just made them a little bit different and a little bit special. So 
and now I'm just arranging them to see how I think they're going to look. I'm just inking around my Christmas tree. It was great use. They, I find all those punches in secondhand shops and they just sit in the drawer. So I really love it when I can drag them out and use them for something. And they're really effective for this. Now here's my little ground piece that I cut. And of course I'm inking, uh, it's really just the top of this that I'm inking and on both sides. Because of course we're going to see this scenery uh, in both sides of the tag. Now there's the transparency film. It has some tissue paper in between the layers. So I just leave that on while I'm cutting it so it doesn't pick up too much dust. So I'm just using the tag to sort of help me measure how thick I want it. How wide. And I'm just cutting two strips like that. And now I'm using the tag again to see how wide I want it again. And then I cut another two pieces out of each one of those pieces because we'll need two pieces for each window. Now we've got to stick our transparency film on. So I'm just using my Helmars. Now I just run a thin bead around the edge. I try not to get it too close to the edge because we don't want it to spread out and go on to the um, film where we're going to see it through the window. Although I always do get just a bit, a little bit coming out somewhere or a um, spider web of it that runs across, which is so frustrating. But yeah. Then of course you let that dry well and you do that on all four pieces. And now to adhere this little bottom piece, I just run a strip of glue just along the bottom and stick that to the tag, not the film, because we don't want that showing. And now these other pieces, I don't actually stick down. I just put them in and hope that the acetate um, sandwiches them in and holds them, which it seemed to do a pretty good job of, which I was happy with. So I just position them where I like them. The big star, the little star on the tree. And then I found this, it's sort of like white iridescent glitter. It's beautiful. And I thought that would make really cool snow. So I stuck some of that in as well. Then just glue all around my back or front of the tag. Front by the looks. And then stick that down. Make sure it's pretty even. Then I just inked around the edges and I also put a bit of ink in um, the hole up the top, the tag hole. And I inked the back and the front. Then I found a bit of my lace and my seam binding and I tied them in a knot at the top and then just trimmed them to fit. Then I decided that I wanted to use this stamp and uh, heat emboss it, which I'm not very good at. And I did find my embossing buddy, Pam. <laughs> I just didn't use it then. I found it after this. I think it will help because I kept getting like, yeah, I couldn't get all the bit of black specks off. So all these pieces had black snow on them. So I ended up doing a whole heap. But I teared the two best ones out. But they do have black snow. <laughs> but I stuck these little sentiments um, I decided to stick them on the back of the tag. I didn't want to put them on the front. I really liked the front the way it was. So I thought I'd just put them on the back and I really liked them. And they helped cover up the bubbling <laughs> where it got wet. <laughs> then I decided that I wanted something else on the front. So I cut out some little snowflakes. I punched some little snowflakes. And I wanted them a bit higher, so I thought I'd double double them up. So I just stuck two together. And what I did, which I don't think I showed here, was got a little bit of white glitter glue and put some glitter glue over the top. And I inked around them. So they're a little bit sparkly. And then I cut two of them because I wanted to stick them down the bottom. So I did a bit of an edge on them. And then just stuck them two to the front just to add something a little bit more down the bottom there. So they're quite plain tags, but I really like them. I thought they are sort of rustic. So 
So I think that is it. So in the next week, I shall be able to show you the awesome tags that I've got for my partners. It's been a delight getting to know them. Um, yeah, and I can't wait to share their tags with you. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Take care of yourselves, be good, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.